Welcome back AP Calc AB students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School and we're taking a look at our second video over the middle part of Unit 7. We're all about solving differential equations but in this video we're going to turn our attention to finding what's called a particular solution. That's a solution when you're given an initial condition and these are probably going to be the more commonly encountered types of differential equations that you will see on the AP exam. So let's jump right to our example number three here. Let's move me right in that corner. So given the differential equation, x squared plus four times dy over dx equals x times y, find the particular solution determined by the initial condition y equal two when x equals negative three. Well, the one thing about these types of solutions versus the general solutions that we saw in example one and two is that they begin very similarly. You have to separate variables. In this case, as always, we're gonna get the dy and the y's on the left, the dx and x's on the right side. So to pull that off, I think we have to do three things. Number one, or in no particular order, we're going to have to divide y over to the right, to the from the right to the left. Number two, we'll have to divide x squared plus four over to the right. And number three, we'll have to multiply, because he's in the bottom, the dx over to the right. So you can typically pull all of those off in one step if you feel comfortable with your algebra skills. If not, it's not a contest. In other words, you guys can use as many steps as you want, but the, the key is that you have to make sure that you've separated them correctly. It can really be disastrous if you have something that doesn't match the uh, correct equation separated, because you will get a different answer. But more importantly, you might integrate ways that are easier than what really should be being used and then that could kind of come back and, and, and cost you points. Next thing, you're going to integrate both sides. Typically, you can write the integral symbol on that same step, but I'm going to go ahead and use another step here so the notes look very thorough. And we're off and running, guys. We just have a pair of integration problems, not too terrible, that we have to handle. Now, I think the left side is pretty cut and dry. It is a formula. The antiderivative of 1 over y is the natural log of the absolute value of y. And then over on the right side, we're going to use a u substitution. And I see that u stands a very good chance of being the denominator. Because if I take the derivative of that denominator, you would get 2 times x dx. And the x dx is a perfect match. The 2, not so much, but we can offset with a 1 half. And then basically what that's going to lead to is the integration of 1 over u. And so that's going to be another natural log form. Now, I don't really think we have to put absolute values around x squared plus 4 since he's guaranteed to be positive. You can certainly put those in there if you need to, but you can certainly do without them. Now, if this bothers you, this integration technique, I think this still will continue to come in time. Maybe if you looked at this long enough, you could have fathomed that u is going to be the denominator. Uh, I, I just, for the purpose of the time in the video, I just didn't want to like have us to go through all the sort of chains of events to, to figure out what integration technique to use. Don't forget that we need a plus c, and we typically put that on the right side. So you're looking pretty. You're probably looking at maybe three points that you've scored in this problem thus far. We just need to finish it up. And one way to do that is to find the value for C. And that's what I want to do next. So we're going to kind of switch modes here. And we're going to use this initial condition, this ordered pair. Now notice this ordered pair is presented in a very sneaky way. They put the y value first and then the x value second. So make sure that you have that in the right order. And we use that to find c. Now, it is possible. You could solve this equation for y first, and then you could find c. I'm going to admit I'm not a big fan. I think it is a little bit more difficult to carry that out. And usually if C is this number, you're going to be able to work with it better than if it's a variable. But sometimes C isn't going to be a very pretty number, and I think we're going to find that out here in a second. 
And so we have this expression, and we simplify a little bit, and we essentially have natural log of 2 equals 1 half the natural log of 13 plus c. So when we subtract the 1 half ln of 13 over, our c is not the prettiest thing in the world by any stretch of the imagination. It's pretty darn ugly. You could move that 1 half up into the numerator, I'm sorry, the exponent of the 13, and you could write this as the square root of 13. Um, you could even go one step beyond, and we could write this as the natural log of the fraction 2 over square root of 13. That's perfectly legal, because whenever you're subtracting two logarithms, that manifests itself into this logarithm of a quotient. Uh, we'll probably decide maybe which is best here in just a moment when we start rewriting our final answer. And that's kind of where we are. We're going to return to this step. And the natural log of the absolute value of y is 1 half times the natural log of x squared plus 4. And then that c is going to be added. And I think at this point, I'm going to make the call. Let's write it as the most concise possibility, which is the natural log of the 2 over square root of 13. The only thing we have left to do is we got to solve this for y. We need to get y by itself. Now, there are a couple of different ways you can do that. But the way that I like to teach is use the exponential base. What that means is we're going to use e as a base and apply that to both sides of this equation. Now, what that means is that the right side is a pretty robust power of e. Look at that thing. All of this that I'm highlighting is the exponent of e. But that's OK. We're going to continue to, to work with this. We know that e and the natural log will cancel. And that will just give you the absolute value of y. But if you go back here and you notice that your y was positive, then from that initial condition that creates this expression, our y is not going to run the risk of having that negative value. Right? The vertical line test is going to uh, help uh, ensure that. So y is our result there. And then over here, we're going to do a couple of things. I'm first of all going to rewrite this 1 half exponent as the power of the x squared plus 4, which could be the square root. And then instead of adding another exponent piece, I'll multiply by e to the ln of 2 over radical 13. I'm basically splitting this plus in my exponent as a multiplication with two like bases. Now, the two e and the lns will obliterate each other, basically wipe each other out. And I have y on the left, square root of x squared plus 4. And then I have the multiplication of 2 over root 13, which you could write this a variety of ways. Maybe that looks better placed in front. You could put this whole 13 under the radical. I mean, there's really a variety of ways that this can be written. I don't know if one is any better than the other. Uh, so I'll just give you like a pair of them to, to use. And if it's a multiple choice question, you might have to kind of think through the options and see which one most closely resembles where you landed. But if it's a free response, if you have y by itself, you're, you're going to be in, in pretty good shape. And I would also go as far as saying that maybe that step there without the uh, ease being simplified might be acceptable unless there's something in the directions that do say otherwise. There's a lot going on here, not going to lie, but this would indeed be the solution to the differential equation. I want to take a second and show you a very cool thing on the graphing calculator. And here we are. Notice I am in a scratch pad calculator screen. Uh, so you can do this either in a scratch pad or a document. You just need to be on a calculator type of page. And I'm going to go into menu and I'm going to choose calculus option.
And I'm going to pick something that we have never done before. In fact, it doesn't even show up on the initial 10 options. You have to scroll down a ways more until you get to this option D called Differential Equation Solver. Hit enter. A window will pop up with various fields. The first one asks you to input your equation, and they give you a bit of an example what your equation should look like, what form. And it will start with the derivative by itself. Now, if you look at your original problem, the dy dx derivative was not by itself. But if you were to divide the x squared plus 4 over to the right, then it would be by itself. So to make this syntax work, you would type y. And then to get that prime mark, you use this little temp, uh, punctuation button next to the g, and it's in that top row. Now, because the equation solver window here does not allow for control divide. You can't make a fraction template, unfortunately. What you will have to do is parenthesis the x times y, and you do want to put a times in between those so it understands that to be a multiplication and not a character string. Then you'll divide, and then you'll need another set of parentheses to invoke the x squared plus 4 quantity that would lie underneath that. So it's sort of like the old school way that we had to type things into some of our older model calculators. Next up, answer a few questions. What is the independent variable? That is typically going to be x in this problem, um, or t if it's a word problem. The dependent variable is y. And then for the condition, that would be that ordered pair they gave us. Notice there is a special syntax that you must use down here, y of 0 equal 1. Well, in our particular problem, when x is negative 3, the y was 2. So you would type y of negative 3 equals 2. And sometimes you can have more than one condition. We only have the one in this problem. And so you'll hit OK. It'll bring you back to the scratch pad calculator page. And it basically uh, displays all of that information. If you didn't want to use that particular template, you can just type in DE solve and just kind of memorize this uh, syntax. It does use the AND command with a space before and after if you want to do it that way. Cool thing is, if you hit enter, boom, that is our equation. What? It doesn't look like ours. If you go back and look at our solution, we had 2 square root of x squared plus 4 all over 13. There's just a rationalization of the denominator happening. Multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 13, and now we do match our answer. In fact, I'll take you back to the other page to, to verify this, all the while taking a little screen capture of this just so that we can make sure, and then we will wrap up the video. All right, here is our calculator answer there, pasted to the right. And as I said, if we simply decided to get a common denominator, a common, a rationalized denominator by multiplying by root 13 over root 13, we would see that this is going to segue into this answer, which matches our calculator. So it's great that you have that differential equation solver because you can use it to check answers if you don't have a key handy. Anyway, I hope this helps. We do have a couple of more of these. Each one's got a little bit of a different vibe going on, so we want to make sure that you watch them. The more exposure you get to differential equations, the better you get. It usually in my experience as a teacher, a student needs to really expose themselves to about 10 of these problems, whether it's watching in a lesson, maybe practicing them, and at that point, the mastery level really kicks in, and you find yourself really being quite, quite adept at solving these. Be sure to stick around for those upcoming videos. As always, if you like the video series, be sure to smash that subscribe button and join our little calculus army. Again, thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.